there are great games about fish and fishing and people who fish and also <laughs> games about Vikings and zombies and trading in the Mediterranean and fishing in outer space. But what about games built around religion? Can games about religion be great games too? Can they even be fun? I mean, not just passively fun, but really fun. Today we are thrilled to welcome the Reverend Alice Connor to discuss what makes for a great religion-themed board game. Plus, at the end of this show, we'll each be naming our top three favorite religious-themed board games. On this episode of Board Game Faith, the bi-weekly show exploring the intersection of religion, spirituality, and board games. Welcome, everybody, to Board Game Faith. My name is Daniel Hilty. My name is Taylor Kevin. <laughs> and I'm Alice Cotter. Alice, welcome so much to uh, Board Game Faith. We are really, really happy to have you here. I am delighted to be here. And uh, Taylor Kevin, is that how you want to go today, or are you going Kevin Taylor? Um, I'm not sure yet. Okay, that's Still fine. Still thinking about it. You'll okay. answer to either one. Yes. Oh. Anything well, but late for dinner, as my dad mm, oh, We won't oh, call you late for dinner. You and my dad. <laughs> 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 well, um, Alice, uh, again, uh, welcome. We're glad to have you here. Uh, uh, Alice um, is uh, a, a, a wonderful uh, person who inhabits the space at the intersection between board games and religion, the, the thing that uh, uh, this podcast really loves to explore. Uh, we first became familiar with uh, Alice through her writings for the Daily Worker Placement, uh, a wonderful uh, online uh, board game uh, website that includes all sorts of blogs and, and reviews, um, and really just were um, so grateful for uh, Alice's reflections on, on what makes for good religious themed board games and we'll be getting into that in, in a little bit but before then Alice please tell us a little bit uh, about yourself I would love that um, yeah so for sure I write for the daily worker um, but I also everyone in the world has a podcast um, I also have a podcast yes. with my friend Taylor uh, that you can find by searching for daily worker placement uh, our, our podcast is sort of a child of that i guess it's called table talk um and we yes talk about whatever the heck we feel like talking about uh we just did one on house rules um because nice people have ways that they change their games uh to play them better mm. differently or whatever mm -hmm. anyway uh that's just a little plug sorry um no that's I, what you should do <laughs> i uh i am an episcopal priest i just uh just this past weekend had my 19th uh ordination anniversary which is kind of wild Congrats. and uh i was also, just last night, it was an inter excuse me in an interview uh, for a new position, and they were asking me some questions. And I said, honestly, my what my brain is full of is songs that I teach, uh, the love of Jesus, and board game rules. <laughs> I have, <laughs> and probably a lot of your listeners would would feel the same uh, when you're when you're a giant nerd about board games. I just have hundreds and hundreds of games rules in my head. I could teach them mm. to drop a hat. I don't know really? why my brain works that way, but I can remember mm. it. I, sometimes it's helpful to refresh myself, but for the most part, I just can do it. It's weird. So, uh, so the rules don't fade over time for you? Mostly no. Uh, wow. it, does, it does depend on the game and its complexity. There's certainly, uh, we, wow, we did have, yeah. uh, we did have a post we did about uh, that time. I forgot a really important rule. <laughs> um, which does happen. Uh, I'm not saying yeah, I have all it of happens. it, but it's, it's pretty wild. Um, like I can teach a room full of 200 people, you know, 70 different games. It's fine. Um, hmm, which is not, I'm not awesome. trying to like boast or anything. I'm just saying like, I'm trying to articulate who I yeah. am in the world. Yeah, how I walk yeah, yeah, are you yeah. good? Can you remember phone numbers and other stuff like that? Um, I do remember numbers, but I couldn't tell you what they're for. <laughs> right. Hmm. But you remember the pattern. <laughs> 
do you think your brain is just is it can walk through the structure or is it as the board comes out you remember like how do you mm. think the triggers work for that's interesting unlocking all i that? tend to be a visual thinker um and i, I would say how do i want to say this um like themes uh as when i write sermons my uh sort of how do i want to say this the, the theme of the sermon or the like an image uh, that I want to use in the sermon tends to come first, uh, rather than the thing that I want to say about the mm -hmm, Bible, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> which mm -hmm. may seem kind of backwards, but it yep. works. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I think there's something to do with the components and and similar that it, it reminds me what I'm doing, maybe. Mm, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, and I, I've written some books about women in the Bible and um, about how to be a better human, um, which you can find at aliceconner.com. <laughs> uh, Wonderful. And yeah, I just I, I have been obsessed with board games for, for a long time. Um, like a lot of people, I would say Settlers of Catan was probably my gateway game to mm -hmm. the heavier hobby. And But I haven't played that in a long heavier. time. Uh, <laughs> I play a lot of other stuff now. Um, just brought back a pile of games from from my job that um, that were mine, but uh, it's a very large pile of things that I've yeah. collected over the years. Uh, so, and where do you skew more on the Euro side or mm. the Ameritrash side? Hmm. I'm not gonna lie, I do have some Ameritrash stuff, uh, but I I'm gonna say I think that's a false dichotomy. Uh, I don't Ooh. think I don't think that everything can be. I certainly don't think everything can be separated into into a binary like that. Um, That's fair. I probably. Yeah. I mean, of that binary, I probably lean more towards Euro stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But I I tend to be more interested in things with with strange mechanics, uh, mm -hmm. or I I do like clacky bits in my game. <laughs> like if you th the the fancy uh, clacky bits for Quacks of Quedlinburg. You put in the bag and he makes oh, lovely the, like noise. The upgrades you... from, from the board upgraded game bits geek for quacks. Yeah, yes, that's so good. Yes. Uh, yes. So I, I do have a little obsession, <laughs> slight obsession with clacky bits. Uh, but like, I, mean, I, I like, like things that have and physical yes. stuff. Well, and, yeah, yeah, and the yeah. feel. Cool. The, the, uh -huh. yeah, I was going to yeah. say, it's not the mouth feel, it's the hand feel. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which is absolutely. How you just feel things. Uh, no, I, I, like, I like games that have weird mechanics. Um, and I like things that make me think hard. I like a, I like a bit of a brain burner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like like difficult decisions, like decisions like you could do this and it's really good, but you mm. could also do this and it's really good. I and mean, that, that sort of thing where you're trying to weigh, which is the better good to do? Yeah. Yes. Perhaps. Definitely yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. also, while I'm very bad at it, uh, I really enjoy games like Glass Road where it's 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 partly... The question of decision, but it's more. It, we were just saying this on on our podcast table talk. Um, it's not even a balance. It's there are three primary elements in that game. How do they interact? How do I make mm -hmm. them function? Even like not even function mm -hmm. well. Just how do I make them function? Yeah, and then function well. Um, Glass Road, of course, an older Uwe Rosenberg game um, about town building because that's what he does. No fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No fish, but, but there's some there is some <laughs> town building and there's gruel and wood, of course. Anyway, <laughs> does flax make its way into there? No, no that's another, there's another no thing. Flax. Okay, okay. No, there's like right. silt right. and. <laughs> <laughs> I think the flax great. is in the the uh, feast for Odin. Maybe, oh, maybe you Odin? know I haven't played that yet. It's on my list. I think there's flax in that. Isn't it like big wheat thing or something? I think so. So, so among the games that you enjoy, I need more flax enjoy, in my diet. Probably, we need more Who flax. Doesn't? Just, just the flax. flax diet. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, wait. Listen. Speaking of that high flax diet, I do. I do I'm, actually I'm have a game one. that I kickstarted called uh, "So You've Been Eaten." That's about uh, mining for jewels in the digestive tract of a giant space monster. I've wow. seen that talked about. Yeah, wow. it's very good, and it's it, good? it was designed by a guy who has 
I want to say either Crohn's or IBS or something like that. And so it, it's, oh. it was at least a little bit inspired by his experience of his own <laughs> gut awesome. biome. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. So, has it been has it come out, out yet? I've either. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a, it's okay. a great two player game. <laughs> oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Wow. Mm-hmm. Huh. That's... So among the games that you enjoy playing, um, yeah. some of them have have religious themes and or are, are built around at least somewhat the, the theme of, of religion. And, mm-hmm. and this mm-hmm. seems to have been a topic that kind of, kind of piqued your curiosity because mm-hmm. um, you, you, you've written about this, right? The, the series that I got to see on daily worker placement was your theme of playing at religion, kind of these series mm-hmm. of essays about, about games uh, that are built around religion and, and and I wonder if it might be helpful just to kind of start the conversation by by defining what we're talking about. I mean, what what yeah, what please. is a religiously themed game? What sort of games are we talking about this episode? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, my my definition that I proposed is uh, that a religious game is one whose theme is primarily but not exclusively exploring the practice, history, or theology of any religion or spiritual tradition. That may seem kind of obvious. Um, but like, I feel like, I feel like I had conversations with people where they're like, oh, how about, oh gosh, now I can't think of what they suggest. <laughs> I feel like there were some like Eric Lang games maybe that were suggested. And I was like, I'm not sure those are religious games. I feel like they have some, some vibes of religion. I mean, they're certainly made up religions much of the time. Um, mm-hmm. It would, I, I guess, I guess now if I'm saying this out loud. I didn't, I didn't say in that definition, a quote, real religion. But then that, ooh, that brings a whole level of uh, judgment <laughs> mm, <laughs> on things. Mm, like, do we, do we count Scientology mm. as a real religion? Mm, mm. <laughs> Having been mm-hmm. created by a sci-fi author to make money? Unclear. Um, right. Or also, are there Cthulhu any board games themed. about Scientology? Hmm. Mm, Listeners, right. let us know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So I, essentially, you think it would I, work because just... you go up levels, right? It would work yeah. very well. Yeah. I... Okay. Somebody get on that. Uh... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I I felt like it was important to say, like, because I because I had been looking at a bunch of different um, games, and some of them are definitely more historical, and some of them are. I mean, there are definitely games out there that are about theology. Um, there are also ones that are skinned to be about theology, but aren't really. Um, mm. like I would say, um, Nicaea from Hollenspiel, phenomenal mm-hmm. game. Excellent, mm-hmm. excellent game. Also side note, run, don't walk. Hollenspiel does amazing work. Um, mm-hmm. that particular one, you are, uh, the, the players are attempting to essentially, you're, you're attempting to be on the right side of history around the council of Nicaea in 325. It's, it's not really, I mean, the, the cards do have theology on them and they do have historical figures from the era. The art is gorgeous. It's, it's very cool. You can read about homoousis and homoousis if you are so inclined. Um, but the goal is not to have the actual historical quote, right answer that the council of Nicaea created. It's more of a pressure luck kind of betting game. Um, hmm. because you, you want to have enough of the cards from, the A side or the B side or whatever, that at the end of the game, you have bet correctly based on what other people have done, which then ends up with a really kind of fascinating theological setup. Like, what did you actually come up with as a group? <laughs> right, right. What is that saying theologically? Yeah, I mean, if... if what is does this... that say theologically? Yes. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, Dan Thoreau from the Space Biff yes. podcast, he was Love on this, this podcast earlier. Yeah. And he also talked about Nicaea. Um, I, Great which, game. Um, and yeah, and I've never played it, but it's, I guess, Amabel Holland is, I guess the mm-hmm. design, just mm-hmm. some yeah, she's shout out to her. But um, I've never played it, but he spoke so highly of it as well. I want to play it now. It sounds, yeah. mm-hmm. it sounds great. But it does bring up that really interesting question. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, is, and I... The impression I got from Dan is that maybe that's kind of the space that Amabel was trying to play with mm-hmm. was how much mm-hmm. of our theology today is the result of is is the result of the Holy Spirit coming and descending and working mm-hmm. among the gathered community of believers and how much of it is uh, yeah majority majority wins 
majority rule or, or like who and, bet on what and yeah, when yeah 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 and do they oh, regret yeah. it struggles <laughs> right right yeah yeah right like i i need i needed to be for various reasons on the right side of this and so i chose this and i don't mm -hmm. like it mm -hmm. yeah yeah practical um the considerations practical levels of that yeah. expediency mm -hmm. kevin you feel like are, are you are you, you look to me like you were trying to say something there a second ago. Any thoughts on, on this? No, um, I, except that I want to play it. And, and it, it is, um, it, it sounds really cool. And yeah. I was just saying it the other day. You do need three people. So that's the, there is a tricky kind okay. of yeah. Okay. scale. It, yeah, I don't think it works with to, two. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. there's three of us here. You should just drive to Cincinnati and uh, I have a copy. There you go. Let's do it. Let's do it. That'll be so okay. convenient. Okay. But you're Can saying we... that the game, sorry, Daniel. Go no, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. Uh, but that Alice, you're saying you feel like Nicaea, the mechanics don't match. Is that what you're implying there? That the mechanic, that the theme um, is there, but not the mechanics, because it's press your luck. Well, no. So sorry. That thank you for that. Uh, what I meant, uh, sort of, sort of. But um, and like a like a, a, it's not an auction, but you are kind of betting on on things. Um, I, I, per what we were just talking about, I actually think those mechanics fit well with sort of, again, what, what I think Amabel might be trying to do with it. Um, mm -hmm. But that, uh, it, it, no, it, it, I would say it is a religious game. I, I also like to categorize food, which if any of my former students listen to this, sorry, I'm bringing it up again. Um, <laughs> I have a very expansive understanding of what makes something a sandwich. Uh, so listeners, please prepare to be horrified. I do think a burrito is a sandwich. Huh? Nice. Nice. Mm. Anyway, my point is, so. yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. say that to say, uh, if you think about like the target logo with the sort of bullseye situation, there's stuff in the middle that is very clearly a sandwich, right? I think there's, there's games that are very clearly games about religion. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there are other games that are maybe they kind of maybe a little bit less so still, still very much about religion, but kind of takes on some other aspects. And then eventually you get things way on the outside where it's like, it's got a skin of religion, but isn't really. Um, and you're going to ask me what an example of that is. Uh, I don't have one off the top of my head. <laughs> maybe well, we might I get thought some. of, what's that? Yeah, go for it. Go ahead. Kevin. Oh, the, there's the sellers of Catan got a Mormon, right? Yes. Uh, it's called the sellers of Zarahimla. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Yeah, Dan. So Dan that's was one talking where about it's this. really not a religious game beyond just the words. Yeah. 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 yeah there's another one that's like a, a sort of Christian themed one. It's a similar kind of thing. It's it really is just Settlers of Catan, mm -hmm. with some religious stuff thrown at it. And it's like, is that? So, so a couple of things related to that. Number one, before I let it pass, um, um, my favorite quote of the episode so far is. I have a very expansive understanding of what makes for a sandwich. That's a fantastic yes, but... quote. And I, I, I thank you for putting that just out into existence, Alice. I love that. Yes. Um, um, and, and the second thing is it makes me wonder. So if there are these mechanisms that don't necessarily mm. seem to, to lend themselves uh, to, uh, that, that to match with a religious thing, are, it makes me wonder, are there mechanisms that are especially well suited mm. for a religious themed game and what would they sure. be? Well, I guess it depends on how cynical you are. Um, <laughs> right. I think you're in a, I think we're open to anything on this, on this podcast. Or, right. Or for sure. I mean, <laughs> we, we were just talking about the idea of, of Scientology and, and sort of, right. Like going up levels, you could totally see tech tracks. You could totally see, um, like, mm -hmm. uh, I really enjoy playing Sulkin, uh, Sulkin, mm -hmm. the Mayan calendar. Mm -hmm. I yeah, would say yeah. that is a religious themed game, though it is also culturally appropriative, um, mm. which is a whole perhaps mm -hmm. other conversation. Um, right, right. It has a lot of things in it. It has, it has, among other things, religious temples that you can kind of move up in terms of your, re presumably your relationship with the gods. Um, so I could, I could see mechanisms like that um, working. Um, yeah, yeah. But there's, we... I, I love games with interesting mechanics. Um, and I, and as I was saying, I, I like games that are, are complex and make my brain hurt a little bit, but I also really like games that aren't necessarily super complicated, but, but give you a, a vibe 
I love mm, games yeah. about feelings. Um, yes. Now, and, and I'm going to give you an example of that that is not religious, but I think is one of the most transformative games I have ever played. And mm. I am hoping to, I'm going to be interviewing the designer, uh, I forgot his last name, Cesar. Um, the game is called, I guess this is it. It's an 18, huh. it's from Button Shy. It's an 18 card role playing game for two people where their relationship is ending for whatever mm. reason. Now it's a role playing game. So you set it up at the beginning, you choose together who you're going to be. Is one of you dying? Is one of you just moving away? Are you on a foreign planet and something happens? I don't know. Uh, it can be, any, it can literally be anything cause it's a role playing game, but it's card based. <laughs> And you have this little sort of setup of cards on the table and you, you play a card and you talk to the other person about the theme of that card at how it relates to the relationship you've created. And essentially when you run out of cards, the person who is leaving says, I'm sorry, I have to go goodbye. And they get up mm. and mm. leave the room, possibly the building. Whoa. <laughs> it is really powerful like i've i've watched it play several times i've played it multiple times it is so heartbreaking <laughs> it, it really is wow. i even played it once wow. with um a close friend who was in fact leaving and we decided to play ourselves and wow that was a lot wow a lot of tears hmm. that game is surprisingly cathartic it's it's just a game. Mm. And I have so many games about feelings. I, mm. I realize this sounds like we're kind of off topic here, but like for me, no. how do I, how do I want to say this? There's games about religion, which to transfer it to sort of board game speak would seem to be about mechanics, right? It's like, who are the gods here? How do you worship them? What does it mean to be part of this religion, right? The three of us know that's not all religion is, right? It's not right, just right. the surface level stuff. Yeah. Um, but then there's that level of what is the actual connection? Like yeah, why, why yeah. would we play a game about, I'm, I have no interest in playing Settlers of Canaan because I, it's, I'd just rather just play Catan. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't need it to have a religious skin on it. Right. But right. I would love to play a game that's about the emotional and cultural devastation of the actual settling of Canaan by the Israelites mm, that mm. deals with how hard that is. Or alternatively, of the Jews coming back from Babylon to mm -hmm. Israel, mm -hmm. or for that matter, being taken to Babylon. You know, like, mm -hmm. not, not in other words, there, there's a level of let's, let's use bits and play cards and, and burn our brains. And I'm so into that. And we'll get to that in a second, probably. But like, Yes, absolutely. But there's also stuff that's about what, how am I being changed? How am I being transformed? Which is what religion is about. Yeah. <laughs> Independent right. of what the theme of the, the, the surface theme may be on a game. Yeah. Yeah. I love mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. That's, um, and that's certainly just, it's such a great articulation of, of, I think, one of the underpinnings of what we try to explore mm. in the show, though, though with the very varying levels of success with this idea that really kind of any experience of, of play and gathering around the table and showing mm -hmm. in a game has religious and spiritual implications. And, Absolutely. You know, and and um, yeah. Oh, that's great. I love, but I've I love never that. thought and, and, about how does this game change me? That's such a profound question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Sorry, how yeah. often does Alice. a game change you? Yeah. Like that. Not, yeah. o not often, but yeah, but they can, they can, they can. No, they absolutely can. I, my um, eldest and I are playing Holding On, the, what is the subtitle mm -hmm. Holding On? The Life of Billy Care, something, something Billy Care from Hub Games. Um, absolutely recommended. There's a couple problems with the rule book, but um, it's it's about helping a guy die well. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a cooperative, you know, if you think about like pandemic or something like that, it's a, it's a co-op mm -hmm. where you are needing to provide him hospice care uh, and and keep him alive for a while so that you can help him process his four biggest regrets. Mm. <laughs> it is mm. beautifully made and very difficult to succeed. He dies a lot. Um, 
And the designer, I just thought this fascinating. I was looking up a rules clarification and the number of times people say things like, well, we're trying to keep him from dying. And he, he came on there and said, he's going to die. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. how this game works. He will uh, die. So uh, what are you doing so in the meantime? <laughs> right, 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 right. Yes. Precisely. I mean, that itself. Yeah, that's so good. That, mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, the point mm -hmm. isn't to to um, stave off death forever because mm -mm. it's not possible. But mm -hmm. but how do we uh, how do we die well? How do right. we yeah. how do we approach it well? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so and, according to my definition, that would not be a religious game. Right. But it kind right. of is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's dealing with the theme that religion. Mm -hmm is interested in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're I, I did. Um, I, I had that one sentence definition, but I also set up a handful of other benchmarks to, to suggest what makes it a good game or what makes, yeah. What makes yeah, it a good religious yeah. game? Um, yeah. yeah. What are some of those benchmarks? What, yeah. what makes for a good religious game? Well, conveniently, you emailed them all to me as a reminder. So thank you for that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> am well, I looking at my email them. right I now? I just put them together. Yes, I am. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I would have had to go find them. Um, I mean, I think the first one that I mentioned in my first article is that uh, it, it's a good religious game if it succeeds at what it's trying to do. This is something that my theater professor back in the day said when we were writing reviews was, don't worry about whether you like it or not yet. What is the thing hmm. you're consuming what is it trying to do and is it hmm. succeeding is it doing it well um hmm. so you know it it I, I posted one about a, a bible trivia game and like it was clearly trying to be an evangelism tool <laughs> and mm -hmm. it did not do it well <laughs> mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. it was just bad it's just a bad game uh among other things it had inaccurate information but also just not good uh and it's not, people don't get converted by that kind of thing like if, if that's your goal right that's right. doesn't work. That's not it. So that, right. so that made it flat out, just a bad game straight up. Um, but some, you know, something like, um, what <laughs> something like a game for good Christians, which is basically apples to apples, but with the Bible is delightful, <laughs> which is one of my later ones is, is a joyous, but, uh, what is it trying to do? It's trying to, I think it's trying to do some increase in Bible knowledge. But it's also trying to be goofy and, and kind of not exactly throw shade because it's it's still it's clearly loves the Bible. Right. Um, it's it's trying to be uh, an enjoyable, easy to pick up game about kind of the ridiculous stuff that's in our scripture. And it works. Right. right. It does it. Right. Um, I think. Another benchmark is that the if it's a good game, it explores whatever its theme is complexly and appropriately for the weight. Um, so I wrote an article about the game Holy from Floodgate, which mm -hmm. is a gorgeous game, so pretty. Um, and we I, I interviewed a friend about that one because um, it's got there's some possible cultural appropriation elements there, which is happens a lot with religious games um, mm -hmm. that are designed by white people. Um, but it's not, it's not a super heavy game. It's really an abstract in a lot of ways. Um, and so it, it, while it does sort of take a skin from, uh, from Hinduism, uh, that is the, the color festival of, of throwing color on people. Um, it, it explores that I think in a way that is appropriate for the weight of the game, right? If it mm -hmm. had been trying to be a whole lot more complicated, it wouldn't have worked. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and then, um, I said it needs to be joyous. I mean, for a game to be good, you got to want to play it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> what is, what is fun is a whole other question, but, uh, kind of is it, yeah, is it yeah, fun? yeah, yeah. Did you enjoy doing it? Like yeah. that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the last one I, I suggested as an option is that, uh, specifically for religious games, is it maybe like as a bonus point, I guess, um, does the game exhort the players to a higher good or does it bring them some comfort somehow? Mm -hmm. um, because in a lot and of ways, either that's... one of those. Yeah. Is a I would good think so. Thing. Yeah. 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 yeah either yeah, or both. Yeah. yeah. And so that, yeah. I mean, that actually kind of begs a question. I would love to ask you guys. Uh, I don't know if you're prepared for that, but <laughs> go for it. Have you, have you played a game, whether or not it was like on the surface, a religious game, 
have you played a game before that did bring you comfort or that exhorted you to a higher good? Hmm. Mm. I got a couple. I could jump in. Are you okay, Kevin, if I yeah. jump in? No, go, think go for it because I'm I mean, I mean, the comfort one is not is not a and, and neither of the and neither of these examples are religious themed. I, I have to admit I, I yeah. I've not played a lot of explicitly religious themed games. It took me it was hard for me to come up with the list at the end, but I've got a few. We but we avoid them, don't we? <laughs> we do, we do. Yeah. Um but the um I mean the first one is, is kind of a cop out, but it's 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 that um <laughs> uh I hate to say it, but I I mean well no I don't I hate to say it, it's just not a good answer. Uh, one of the reasons I play board games is just I just I find the process itself comforting. You know, I just I find mm. I just I find that just that process comforting, even if it's a sure, even if it's a a, um, a a solo game. You know, at the end of the day, just I think we were talking about that. I forget whether it's before on air or, or after air, but after we went online. But just just that just you know the the tactile nature of it. Just this this, mm. this there's something very grounding about playing a board game, right? You know, just where you mm -hmm. uh, you know I'm, I'm dealing with physical stuff. I'm not looking at my screen anymore, or, you know, and yeah. I'm, I'm I'm existing in this real physical world, and I'm moving things around this board, and I just I find incarnational, incarnational. Mm -hmm. Look at look mm -hmm. at you, you you. That's and, and, that's so good. And, and I would add, um, I think there's a sense of of healthy control, maybe. That, mm. that, you know, in the real world, there's all these things I can't control. But mm -hmm. for this brief time, all I need to worry about is, you know, mm. trying to beat my last score and rolling these dice. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. catharsis of, of, of uh, a sense of control and randomness, but, but it's very much, it's more limited than, you know, trying to go to the grocery store and you right. have gum on your shoe, et cetera. <laughs> it's, it's, and it's not randomness that's going to destroy yeah and the randomness at the end of the day the is just a game and you yeah. get to put it in yeah. a box and put it away yeah so mm -hmm. it's yeah. like the play yeah. is ended and and or you know this the rom-com ended and you're done yeah. there's a sense yeah. of closure to it versus yeah. our, our lives just keep going so there's yeah. kind of an ongoing <laughs> they do you know sense of control the the other Sorry, I that's just, you, that's you inspired you got me thinking no, that's good. That's, no, thank you. It is a great question. How yeah. is the process of playing a game comforting? Mm -hmm. the, the the one uh, the, the other thing that came to mind thinking about exhorting exhorting to a higher good. It's a it's a mechanism I've mentioned before on this on this podcast on the show. Um, I don't know if I don't know if this mechanism um, originated with. With Jamie Stegmeyer, but um, but I've seen it in a couple of his games in the Between Two mm. Cities and Between Two Castles of Mad, Mad King Ludwig. But it's this this idea, you know, where your your score is the lowest score that you build with your neighbor to your right or your left, and mm -hmm. and I have mm. I have been fascinated by that mechanism because just because what it means, you know, it, it, the practical mm -hmm. implications of that is I'm not going to win. Unless I try my darndest to help my neighbor win, you know, and I, I yeah. love that. I just think that mm -hmm. you know, I, I love that that mechanism. Like I'm, I'm not going to fulfill whatever I'm working toward unless I'm helping my neighbor try to fulfill yeah. what they're working toward as well. And I, I just think that's yeah. a really a cool mechanism. I get. I, I it's a good mechanism. Know. Yeah, Kevin, yeah. I, and I jumped in there. Did you have? Did you have some more thoughts on games that have comforted you or exhorted you? You know, I, I'm trying to think of something. I, during pandemic, my one of my kids and I really got into Gloomhaven, and so mm. it was more of a distraction. But it was really nice to be mm. able to when we were all hunkered down, thinking we were going to die at some point, die a terrible death, and some people did sadly. But trying yeah. to stay safe and not knowing what to do, like playing Gloomhaven a lot. I mean, we played the whole campaign in like three months. <laughs> hmm. We were just punching Amazing. our clock. So, so I guess that in the sense of it gave me a distraction and um, something that was fun to do with somebody else. So that I'll, I'll, hmm. I'll always remember that. Pandemic season one, I think hmm. is, is one that I would list because it's the kind of game where at some point you're going to remember these are real cities and these yeah. are real places. Like as cities start dying, mm -hmm. you, you, I don't know. For me, you have a sense of global threat and yeah. wanting to save the world. And you're doing it together. And that was just really neat. 
Yeah. And there aren't very yeah. many games that have that reminder of this is this is kind of real in a weird way. Mm-hmm. How about yeah, you, I Alice? That. Well, uh, <laughs> I adore the game A Gentle Rain. Uh, mm. Kevin Wilson, I think, is the designer. It is out of print. Um, I see the rumor on Board Game Geek that it is being reprinted by a new publisher at some point this year, which is wild and amazing news. Um, it's this tiny, tiny little box game. It, it, the The first rule is take a deep breath and relax. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the the theme of it is that it's a it's a co op um, it's co op tile laying game that who, whoever's around the table and you can play it solo. Um, you lay these little tiles with half flowers on them of a, of a pond. You have gone to this, this pond, this lake with your friends to see some special flowers bloom. And, uh, just the basic mechanic is you place the tiles and, and when, uh, like sort of domino style matching the, the sides. And, uh, when you have got four together, they, they, the, the corners of the tiles are rounded off, uh, concave rounded off so that when you put the tiles together, there's a hole. Um, when they're all matched, you put a little wooden flower that matches one of those in the hole. Um, and your goal is to try to get all those wooden flowers on the board. Uh, it's very straightforward. Um, simple, but deceptively so. It's actually quite hard. Um, but it is so meditative. And I have introduced that game to so many people. Uh, and then had to say, I'm so sorry you can't get it. <laughs> it's not available. Mm. Um, which is a bummer. We it, it is very much a comfort game. It is one that we played after our student died in our campus ministry. It is one that people would come in and play three or four rounds of just having had a hard day. Um, just it's, it's quick. It's beautiful. It's soothing. It's, it's just a wild mm-hmm. game and it's not religious at all. Like not even close. It's just flowers in a pond. Um, and like at the end it says, uh, you know, if you succeeded in getting all the flowers in, you know, congratulations, you saw them all bloom. And if you didn't, you can always come back to the lake. <laughs> It's, mm. This is so beautiful. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and it, it brings me such calm and such delight. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. And I mean, I have a handful of things like that. Um, That's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, a friend um, uh, of who who adores that game as well, and I. As you say, it, it's out of print. I, knowing her love for it, I have been trying to find it too and can't. But uh, it sounds, I've just heard such wonderful things about a gentle brain. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's, well, when it gets reprinted, run, don't walk. It's amazing. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I'm going to buy like 10 copies. So it seems... <laughs> I should have bought multiple cool, ones when cool. it came out. Storehouse. <laughs> I, it seems like part of what we're suggesting is things that help us be authentically human Mm. are religious, which is true. I mean, religion Mm. does touch on the human condition and religion hopefully is making us more human that, that, Mm. that, that God and, you know, from a Christian point of view, Jesus, God, the Trinity makes us more fully human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. So, so games that that help us think through that are going to have a at least an indirect connection to religion. Yeah, yeah. I think that the problem is that so many. I mean, so the the idea of our religious games good was brought to me by uh, David Weiss, who's the managing editor of Daily Worker Placement, because um, we had been sort of brainstorming like I could I want to write about this. It's an interesting topic, mm-hmm. but like, what is the question? And that was sort of his question, is because you know so often I think all of us can look at games that have a religious theme and go, really? Like, mm-hmm. why, why, honestly, mostly, why are Christians like this? <laughs> why do we have to put Jesus into everything? Like, can, right. can we not just play a game about saying goodbye and have that be transformative? Why does it have to have Jesus in it? Well, just FYI, uh, I guess this is, it does not have Jesus in it unless I guess you play it that way. Um, like, why do we, why do we feel the need to, like, I, I feel that way about so much Christian media, like Christian movies are always, they're, they're so sanitized. Um, they're, they're either a bunch of white people in brown face wearing robes in the desert, uh, or, or they're just so like, there's no swearing and everything turns out well in the end. And like, everybody's just so nice and it's gross. That's not how the world is. I need, I want 
movies that like listen everything everywhere all at once it's not a religious movie but holy cow i cried so much watching that movie it's a movie about a mother and a daughter working on their relationship and tearing the world apart it's gorgeous yep Yep. and it has meant more to me than almost any movie that has had jesus in it and i yeah Like we, it's, it's like we have yeah. to handle it with kid gloves or something, and I don't, I don't get. So my point being that David asked me that. David's Jewish, and he was like, "Are there any good ones?" <laughs> Basically, <laughs> like, and what and what makes them good? Which hence those those benchmarks that I was trying to come up with. Um, you you asked in your email about uh, Jerusalem Anno Domini. I haven't mm-hmm. played it. Uh, it's got a lot of buzz, I think, because people like the, like the designer, maybe. It's like, I can't speak to that. Um, I did read I did read the Space Biff article about it, and I was, I thought it was really funny that perhaps intentionally, part of the theme is how close can you get to Jesus at the Last Supper? Um, <laughs> which is literally the opposite of some of the stuff that he said. <laughs> right, right. So I kind of enjoy that as a sarcasm kind of moment, but also like, it's, um, I've forgotten his name all of a sudden, Space Biff. Dan. Dan oh, Dan Thoreau. Um, Dan Thoreau. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the things he brought up was like, how serious is the designer about that? Right? Like, is that meant to be kind of sarcastic? Is it meant to be in that Amabel Holland space of like, yeah, yeah, you see how these mechanics are a little weird. You, you get it, right? You get how this is complicated. Is that what the designer is going for with right. that? Or are they just saying like, no, oh, this is a cool mechanic. And like, yeah, of course you want to jostle to get close to Jesus and taking it very seriously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that changes I, how the game works. It does. Both mechanically so and also so, as, you, as you feel about yeah. it. Yeah, go ahead. This is so interesting because it gets into different ways media can be interpreted and, and mm-hmm. how the interpretation can differ potentially from where the person who wrote it, you know, how it takes on a life of its own. Because mm-hmm. I've read a bit of her design journal, the person that designed yeah. it, and she's Spanish and Catholic, and she's really into sort of that Catholic tradition of mystical, spiritual idea of sitting at the foot of Jesus. So mm. I think, and I haven't played it yet, but I think what she was trying to do was that idea of like... Um, uh, who's the famous Spanish nun? Teresa. Teresa. Is it um, Trace? Yeah. Avila. Avila. I think it, it's Avila. Teresa of Avila. Mm-hmm. Teresa of Avila. That mm-hmm. that you know, meditatively you want to sit at the foot of Jesus and be close to mm-hmm. Jesus. So mm-hmm. she was. Tr- so and this is me reading between the lines. But but trying to turn that into a game was how. What can I do to get to the get to be cl- as close to Jesus as right. possible? So. Mm. That's my guess, but the cri- criticism that Dan is launching is perfectly valid, that that has yeah. a very strange notion compared to Jesus' <laughs> message of being a servant right. versus being, you know. But yeah, Mary and Martha, Mary sat at the foot of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's what she was after, but, it, but you have to pay money to get there. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> or fish right. or whatever it was, evidently. Uh. You have um, to bring a I've better potluck it. dish. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, I've yeah. seen. I saw it in the store, and I almost got it. It's not too expensive as mm-hmm. these board games mm-hmm. go, so I came really close. I, I think they look very strange on the cover, too. They look yeah. very menacing. They do. They do. It, the art is odd to me, but, um, yeah, that's one that it, it was, I think it's her first game as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, I... A couple of things on that one. One, it reminds me of something that you said, Alice, in 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 your writings, um, which is that, and and please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but the sense no, that you kind of feel the game is especially good um, to the degree that it's not trying to convince us of something, but just to the but to the degree that it is trying to explore a space, right? And mm-hmm. and. Yes. Uh, and and that's kind of a little bit of what I hear in your all's discussion of, of this game, right? That you know, to the mm-hmm. extent that it is inviting the player to explore a, a space and and in, in thinking about Jesus, you know, what and that mm-hmm. you know that that's a positive thing. To you know, to the, the extent that any game is trying to, um, 
say, well, this is what, this is the argument that you have to believe because of, yeah, because of my game, that that's maybe makes for a less good game. Though, as you as you wrote, there are some exceptions to that that you that you thought of as well. Um, what were my exceptions then, that I wrote about? <laughs> Oh, well, well, you said like, for example, um, no, it's all good. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to like spring it on you. You talk about the uh, the Underground Railroad and uh, Train. Yeah, okay. well, both the games are trying yes, to convince yes, us yes, of something, yes, right. but but rightly so, right, right, rightly so. Yes. Um, of the awfulness. So, and, and again, of... that maybe maybe that comes back to that question of what is the game trying to do? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, so yeah, it answers yeah. that first. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess that's. I think that comes from my perspective on so much of Christianity specifically. And that's, that's definitely the, the space I sit in. Um, and so listeners, if you come from other traditions, I, I would actually be really interested to hear if this shows up in your tradition as well. Um, yeah. that, that sort of this idea, Christians in particular are real big on making more Christians, uh, or maybe I should say some Christians are really big on making more Christians. Uh, and, and sort of by hook or by crook, uh, and, and that feels in the real world, like outside of games, uh, that feels gross. I, I worked on a college campus for 14 years and that's a huge mission field for a lot of folk. Um, they come out to college campuses to try to convince students in all kinds of different ways, uh, that what they're doing is wrong and they should become Christian. And I, to the point that I even thought at one point about taking the cross off the front of our building because it's, it has so much negative and manipulative weight um, that mm -hmm. was not what mm -hmm. Jesus was doing. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I didn't want, mm -hmm. I, I chose not to do that because I didn't, I wanted, I wanted the cross and the pride flag next to each other as a, mm -hmm. a symbol. <laughs> but also uh -huh. I, did, I didn't want it to be a bait and switch um, because that right. happens all the time. Um, right. We, we are, we were a Christian organization and, uh, while we looked a lot different than a lot of other ones, uh, and we were entirely radically welcoming to people who were not, uh, not, did not try to make anybody into anything else. It was important to note that this is a thing. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is yeah. where we come from. Right. So, so I think that's, I think there's, a, I, I have a lot of resistance to certainly people who do that, but any game that seems to be trying to manipulate me um, in a right. religious or way or coerce you mm -hmm. or coerce mm -hmm. me in a religious way. Now I haven't, I know the end of train, so I can't play it now, but also there's like one copy, but whatever. Uh, I like, I love right. the idea of right. the existence of train <laughs> that right. it, that it does right. what it does. Right. Um, and it is trying to manipulate you into something. Yeah. Interestingly, that's its entire point. So like, mm -hmm. so there's that exception, right? It's, it's trying to make you see something about the Holocaust that you might not have thought of. Um, yeah. And I think that's important work too. So I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of talking myself on two sides of this, right? <laughs> no, no, it, it... <sighs> maybe, maybe the religious themes ones are too, what's the word I want? surface they're very obvious yeah the, when they do reductive that reductive instead yeah. of expansive mm. yeah mm. yeah that's thank you that's actually a very good distinction i i i want all my games to be expansive <laughs> mm. Mm. i mean even something that as is, simple as a gentle rain that is good it's concise but it is expansive in the sense of what it offers you yeah. mm -hmm. There's a new religiously themed game coming out, I think maybe at the end of this year, Ezra and Nehemiah from mm -hmm. Garfield Games. <laughs> and you were mentioning, you know, what's it like to rebuild? I don't know how much the th religious theme is overtly present. Right. But it, but you do have, and I love their games, so I think they will, I'm sure it'll be a Euro type yeah. building experience and that fits in well with the sense of rebuilding a city that was destroyed and temple. Sure. Yeah. And it's it's funny. It I saw that like I post on BGG or something about that. And I was like, really Ezra Nehemiah, like the two most boring books of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> they build a wall. That's what they do. They build a wall. Right. It's great. Uh, That's why they're safe. Which, which right? is, yeah. I mean, I, I would be intrigued by that as well. Like I'd love to play it and just see, see how it goes. Um, I, 
I did write an article about Jericho, which is a card game from, oh gosh, a while ago, like 2012 or something. I can't remember exactly when it came out. Um, I got it very cheap when I was getting some other games from somebody uh, in a trade. And um, I was like, sure, I'll get a $5 card game about the fall of Jericho. Why not? <laughs> it's very good. It turns out. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a brain burner, and there's there's some luck involved, and yeah, you're you're everybody's trying to build their own sort of color coded walls of Jericho and knock everybody else's walls down and get points while you do it, and it's wild. It's a wild game about wall building, <laughs> like straight up about wall building <laughs> and falling down. <laughs> I remember I I remember reading that article from you, and I was I was like. I, it was, I mean, everything you write is, is just, is a, a delight to read. But yeah, I, I was, I was surprised by the turn that it took. Cause I was, I was starting to read. I was like, oh, she's not going to like this game. It's like, oh, she really likes this game. <laughs> this is, Reader, it's this great. is great. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good segue into, we wanted to end the episode yes. by talking about our, our, maybe our top three favorite religiously themed games. And uh, do we feel ready to do that, <laughs> Alice and Kevin? Sure. I'm going to have to make stuff. it up because I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we can, we can, we can, uh, we can go to you last, Alice, if that would Come be helpful. Me last. Yeah, that's probably a good if choice. That would be... do you, and, and Kevin, you were the one that, that thought of this. Do you, have, do, you want to, do you want to kick it off? Do you have any thoughts? Are we doing all three or are we doing one? You mean give all three? Oh, do you want to like, you want to go around the circle? Top. Like, like. Like a countdown to the top oh, one. Oh goodness! Oh my goodness! Okay, okay. I don't okay. know if I ranked them. Yeah, I, I didn't rank mine either. I say, how about just you I... just want to go to your top three? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll do number number three, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm gonna go with the Freedom the Underground Railroad, mm. and mm -hmm. because it's a story about history, and I do own it. I've only played it maybe twice. Um, I don't know that it's that gr a great a game mechanically, but it's really neat what it's doing, and it reminds you the role of religion as well as both the characters and people. Some of them have religious backgrounds, but that idea of liberation. But mm -hmm. I also appreciate that there are difficult moral choices in it, mm -hmm. that in order mm -hmm. to save a group of people, you may have to let one of the slaves get captured. Mm -hmm. So there's a bit of that. So I appreciate the tough moral choices. And the sense that the slaves just keep coming in and they're right. And so you've, you've got this continual flood of slaves. And what you really want to do is abolish slavery. But for now, you can't. So all you do is save as many as you can. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would go with that. What about you, Daniel? Oh, man, mine is not nearly as good as yours. That's 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 thinky and deep and good. I really struggle to come up with uh, with uh, with games of religious things. I just haven't played that many. I I, uh, I think, as you were saying earlier, Alice, I I tend to avoid them if I'm being mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. um, but when so you clock out, Daniel. You're ready to play a game. You're at clocked out of the religion. I, yeah, that's world. right. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Right. That's right. right. <laughs> um, so so this was a, so these are all stretches. But I kind of went with uh, <laughs> with with the broad a broad interpretation of your definition. Alice, just kind of that it deals in some way with religious practice. Uh, uh -huh. that, that's kind of what I applied to all three of these. And so I guess the first one I said was Red Cathedral, which is because you're building okay. a church. Mm -hmm. You're building sure. you're building uh, St. Sure. Basil's Cathedral in uh, in Moscow. Um, and yeah, so your architects trying to build uh, different parts of a church in Red Cathedral. Um, and um, uh, it's it, it's a uh, it's a very the ratio to thinkiness and and strategy and tactics to box size is quite impressive in this game. It's a very small mm -hmm. game um, in the box, but it it um, it has a big footprint both on, on your table and in terms of the kind of strategy space and thinking space. And you're trying to build a church, so um, yeah, I like hmm. it. That's my that, that's okay. My number three. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I am literally scrolling through the religious themed games on Board Game Geek right now. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's fine. Um, no so worries. I think what I'm going to do, I think what I'm going to do is I'm not sure that these are going to be top three favorites, but I think these are top, these are three that I find interesting. How about that? Sure. That's great. Uh, that's great. And worthy of exploration. 
Yep. Um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with uh, so not necessarily in order. Sorry, ruining your prompt. Um, I'm That's gonna why. start with uh, Acts of the Evangelists, um, mm. which I just had on the screen. I think it's mm. on the previous screen here. Um, Acts of the Evangelists is a is a card game. Um, you are going around the ancient Near East and, and the Mediterranean and collecting cards to build the Bible, basically. You are collecting the stories of, um, of course, I can't find it right now. That's fine. Um, you're building, you're, you're collecting the stories of eyewitnesses, uh, of like the evangelists, the apostles, um, and uh, and it's, it is a set collection game, basically, uh, sort of tableau building set collection game. Um, and you're building codices. So once you put things in your codex, it's hard to move them. So then you, you can, you can take whole pages and put them somewhere else, but like in what order do you put these stories and how do hmm. I find it really fascinating theologically, like how, how did the, the groups who wrote the gospels really, how did they do their editing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's, I mean, there's, that's a whole realm of, of theological study is, is textual criticism and, and um, redaction criticism and all that. So, it's, it's really good. It's a good game. It's a very good game. Um, unfortunately, my copy, all the cards are sleeved. Thank you, friend Bailey. I am unsleeving them. I hate sleeved <laughs> cards. <laughs> it's nothing to do with the game. Just cannot stand that. I understand. Anyway, next. I understand. That's a fascinating yeah, one. I have I a like problem it. with sleep. Well, well, they don't stack well. You have a stack no, and then they, they kind of fall over. The table. I don't get it. I don't get it. You can't it. do the, the shuffle. You can't do the riffle shuffle. No. With the, and the yeah. edges are sharp. So sometimes I feel yep. like I'm getting blood drawn. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Awesome. Kevin, do you have a number two? Number two. Number two. I am going to go. I'm not sure which one to put here. I'm going to go with Sleeping Gods. Oh. Because, okay. yeah, there's these different. So it's. I, I would say it's a religiously themed game, but it's kind of in a, a world of spirits, animism, paganism, uh -huh. which is totally fine. It's cool. It's different. So this is a world where oh, there are these forces and beings, and um, I think the designer is Mormon, and it, it reminds me of Mormon science fiction. And th if if you've read any, uh, what's his name, Brandon Sanderson, it's that type mm -hmm. of world building with various spirits. And I'm not sure how that connects with Mormon culture or religion. Any, anyway, but I I thoroughly enjoy it. So it's not really a Christian world, but it is a religious world. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, so Sleeping Gods. Nice. Knowing of your love for Sleeping Gods, Kevin, which I've never been able to play, I, 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 I backed Sleeping Gods 2 on Kickstarter. I'm looking forward to getting oh, that. Just wow. To, to give it a try. Or, or Sleeping whatever Gods 2, crowd, Electric Boogaloo. Whatever crowdfunding source. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. <laughs> Right. I'm looking forward to the Electric Boogaloo expansion. It would be... Um, yeah, it's going to be good. That'd be great. It comes right after the shuffle. Oh. <laughs> well, that was... I didn't even mean to do a... That was awful in, on many levels. Okay. Um, so my number two... Um, again, I struggle with this. I really just went with religious practices of some sort. Mm -hmm. And... Um, um, uh, Biblios. Biblios is, hmm. is a game of monks collecting scrolls <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just, it's a it's a uh, it's a it's a simple card game again kind of like red cathedral it's a very small box but allows for a big open space in terms of uh strategy and tactics and um it's really good it's a fun a fun thinky quick card game uh hmm. biblios where you are uh different um maybe I don't know monasteries, uh, different uh, s schools of of monastics who are trying to collect um, the best scrolls, so that you can like <laughs> totally, you know, flex on the other monasteries because that's the way of Jesus. Yes, absolutely. So that's my that's my number two. <laughs> <laughs> What's another one from uh, you, Alice? I'm gonna say nuns on the run. Oh, it's an older nice. game. It's a hidden movement game. The little nun novices are trying to uh, secretly run out onto this massive board and find a key and then go somewhere else to get their secret treasure and then get back to their room without being caught by the Mother Superior. It's hilarious. Um, oh. I, I love a hidden movement game. 
uh, I mean, it, it could be anything else, but I think it's really charming. The the little nuns running around um, trying not to get caught by the religious authority. It just seems that seems right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great theme. It's good. It's good. It's one of those like all against one kind of games. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. Like uh, Not Alone or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've heard great things about that game. I haven't tried it, but I, I would love to someday. It's older. Yeah. Here it, it's on yeah, Amazon. It's 40 bucks. It has oh, a fun, okay. fun looking cover. Nuns on the Run. Cool. That's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, also has a sequel. Uh, the Electric Boogaloo. No, it right. does. It really <laughs> does. It's wild. Yes. It's weird. That's yes. right. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. What a coincidence. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Kevin. What's the number one for you? <sighs> number one, I'm going to go with Frostpunk, the board game. Ooh. Because it is just surrounded with difficult moral choices. Hmm. Hmm. Like, you really don't want the kids to get sick. Mm-hmm. But somebody's got to get sick. And... <sighs> For, yeah. for the for the town to survive, so you're just mm-hmm. confronted with with painful like what's the worst outcome, and and the least worst outcome might be, you know, all sorts of problems or yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's just mm-hmm. it, I I it's it's not religious in any way. Well, there is there is a way you can there is a religion that can come in this new religious order that can mm. come in and try to sort of give people hope. But other than that, it's more of just the difficult apocalyptic choices. Yeah. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. And I still have how one, so yeah. What's that? I still haven't beat it. It's mm-hmm. like, I can't even beat the introductory one. It's so hard. <sighs> yeah, it's interesting how, how moral ethical choices, um, have factored in this conversation about you know what makes for a good religion whether the, the theme yeah. is explicit mm-hmm. religion and it, it occurs to me th- throughout this hour sorry and then i'll get to my number one uh, of talking that um how we define a religious game largely depends on how we define what's religious right i mean it's mm-hmm. it, but it's um um is yeah. is what's religious something that specifically relates to the mm-hmm. to the outward you know practices of of an inherited tradition, um, mm-hmm. or it's what's religious, um, um, it, 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 you know, interacting with what is this life all about in, you know, yeah. kind of, and the divine in whatever space we're inhabiting, you know, kind of, you know, as you say that I'm reminded of part of this conversation I had last night. Um, I talked about one of my, my tattoos that says, uh, mercy, not sacrifice, which I believe is from Joel. So it could be mm. from Hosea. I have to re-look that up because I can't remember. But Worse. mercy, not sacrifice, being essentially a theme of most of the prophets. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God's desire, not not that we shouldn't sacrifice ourselves for each other in, in context. It's a particular religious sure. practice. And and right. not, I mean, it was written by Jews. It's not, anti-Semit- it's not anti-Semitic. It's this yeah. idea that all the prophets continuously are saying, your festivals mean nothing when you are not caring for each other. Mm-hmm. That's the sacrifice part, right? Mm-hmm. I want mercy. How are mm-hmm. you living with each other? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Religion, like the, the 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 practice, the the cultic, which Christians have cultic yeah. stuff as well. The, yeah. the the trappings are lovely, but they they are nothing if you're not caring for each other well. Mercy, yep. not sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Well said. Well said. I love it. Wasn't me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, well, well recapitulated in the, in the for, for, for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's yeah, awesome. So what's your Thank number you. one, Daniel? Thank you. My number one um, is, here we go. My number one religiously themed game is, uh, uh, again, just dealing with practice, some religious practice of some sort. Um, heaven and Ale. <laughs> um, <laughs> heaven and Ale okay. is, a, is a game about monks making beer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, love it. <laughs> Love it, and uh, and apparently it's a long tradition. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. apparently that's a long religious tradition of monks in monasteries making mm-hmm. ale and beer. Um, and uh, I love, I love the game Heaven and Ale. It's it's a great game um, that can be, combines some of my favorite mechanisms. Um, um, first of all, I'm always I'm always uh, 
I'm always a fool for tile placement games. I love tile mm-hmm. placement games. It's a good tile placement game, um, but it also has the mechanism where you can go as far as you want to around the track, mm-hmm. but then everyone gets to catch up with you. And sure. so, um, you know, you, you can make this big move, but then it allows others to have other moves. Um, it's, um, it's, and, and, uh, my other favorite mechanism is like, one of my other favorite mechanisms is like, you're really not exactly sure who won until you get to the end because mm. there's like this super complicated mathematical formula that you have to apply at the end of the game. Oh, you like that. Um, I, do. I do. I do. <laughs> I do. I like do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. You don't like, yeah. Kevin and I have kind of talked about this before. Like, um, uh, uh, Kevin especially likes kind of like more luck based games because, because anybody can kind of win at the end, right? Based on you get mm. a good roll or whatever. And, mm. and, and this kind of simulates the same thing, but in kind of a Euro game yeah, because sure. you know, that you apply, you apply this mechanism at the end of the game and the math is so obtuse that you, you're not exactly sure who's the winner until you, until you do all your algorithms and then right. you figure out who right, the winner right. is. And I love that. I love that. So, um, so heaven and ale would be so my number one. In a rule book, does it prohibit drinking ale playing the game because you wouldn't be able to do the math? It could make it worse. Like, that's wow. true. That's true. Unless you Why? just ask Google to do it for you. But Plus. yeah, that's right. That's right. So, <laughs> that's so how about funny. you, Alice? Um, so my last one I'm going to say is Zen Tile Solo. Um, which is also oh. hard to get. It's very expensive from Japan. I backed oh. it on Kickstarter. Uh, it's a tiny, tiny little box. Um, they have a Zentiles Basic, which I think is a more of a group game. Zentile Solo is meant as a solo game. Um, it's got sort of a, a day, uh, like a little strip of wood that is, that is your last 24 hours. And then a bunch of little tiles with feelings, experiences on them. And so it's, it's a meditative tool. Um, oh. It's not really a game. <laughs> It's yeah, it's it's hmm. on board game geek though. I've I have some it's a whole other conversation, but I have some issues with what they consider as a game and what they consider as not a game. Uh, mm. Alice is missing mm-hmm. is apparently not a game because you can't win mm. it. Mm. But you can't win Zentile mm. Solo and it's on anyway, whatever. Mm. Mm. Fine. Uh anyway, Zentile Solo Zentile Solo, you sit and you cont- you contemplate the last twenty four hours. And you take mm. these tiles in your hands and you draw them out randomly and you put them where you experience them. It's like wow. surprise or grief or whatever. Um, and, and, and you can do it however you want to. You can put them as close as you want to the timeline to signify like it was really strong or it was maybe kind of distant. Um, you can use the top as sort of experiencing these things in a positive way and underneath as experiencing them in a negative way. I mean, you do whatever you want to with it. And it kind of acts as like a, an emotional journal for your day. There's like, mm. I think, 20 tiles. Um, and then it also comes with a really pretty stone. And this is this is along the lines of Gentle Rain and other, other feeling space games that I enjoy. When you are done, the rules say, basically, you just did a really good job. Like, you, you deserve something nice, like this beautiful stone. <laughs> and so you take this beautiful stone, you hold it in your hand, and then it invites you to put it on the, the pattern that you've made. Uh, on a place when you felt particularly, I can't remember the word that they use, but particularly good about how you showed up in that moment. Wow. I know. That sounds, that sounds amazing. I want that game. It's so delightful. It's like you'd have to spend like 70 bucks to get it from Japan because the game itself isn't that expensive, but shipping is stupid wow. for such a tiny box. I'm going to so look that up. So if you ever up. see it anywhere, totally recommended. Uh, mm. It's a little tiny black box, Zen Tile Solo. <laughs> Love that it. sounds amazing. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of that, Kevin? Well, no. It sounds like s- something in a therapist's office, doesn't mm. it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. actually sitting here wondering where my copy is. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Zentiles.net. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they're they're cool little stones. Yeah, all the stones are unique too. So. Wow. Wow. I, Thank you. That's yeah. awesome. Have to that's a great recommendation. I like it. Jeez, that's a good one. Masterful. Oh. I, well, I have a whole it, list of games I can recommend to everybody for all the things. That's good. Mm. I love it. Well, how can people find you, Alice? How can people find me? Probably just aliceconnor.com. That's my okay. that's my writing website. Um, I think, or you can you can find me on Instagram. That's my primary social media is uh, Pastor Alice. Okay. Um. Yeah, and I on I I do post about games on my 
Instagram, um, but not nearly as, I mean, the daily worker placement is a good place. I mean, for, for my stuff, but also for David and Taylor and Bailey and all the others, um, we have a, a nice stable of folks who do some interesting stuff. Um, so daily worker placement.com and table awesome. talk is your podcast. Table talk is the podcast. You can't find it by searching table talk though. Unfortunately we're, we're in the process of trying to fix that. Um, cause it's on the daily worker placements podcast feed. So look up daily worker placement and then you'll find me and Taylor. Um, Nine whole podcasts. Awesome. <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. Wonderful. <laughs> Find us at boardgamefaith.com and they can listen to the podcast. And we're on YouTube as well. And yep. we will be announcing the results of our contest soon. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, and Alice, Anything thank you else? so much for being with us. Um, You're so I, welcome. It was, it was a delight to get to, to have you on the show. And yeah, we really encourage our listeners to, to, um, to check out um, uh, Alice's um, wonderful uh, reflections and content in, in the various spaces that they occupy in the world of, of books and podcasts and blogs. And um, mm -hmm. we're very grateful and honored to have you on the show today. And yeah, thanks for, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. It was lovely. Uh, all right. And Kevin, thank you. And uh, you're awesome too, man. And, um, and thanks to all of our listeners for, for, uh, for tuning in or watching us on YouTube. We're grateful for all of you. That's right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.